Well, hello and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons and I'm your host and my phone's ringing like crazy. <laughs> Hi, and I'm Carla Garrick and I am your co-host and my phone is doing Facebook Live. And I think my <laughs> laptop is doing Facebook Live, but who knows? And maybe you don't have sound. Hopefully this is live. Um, today is Tuesday, September 8th. It is primary election day and I figured if we should tr get back in the habit. We've been saying we've got to get back to the live feed thing and... Yes, this and was a so good reason. Today is important to, uh, for the people at home. You will probably miss this, but for the folks online, uh, obviously, please come out and come support your fellow uh, Republicans and friends down the ticket. I am running in District 20, so that's Goffstown and Manchester Wards 3, 4, 10, and 11. There was a really good turnout. I was up at um, Goffstown for most of the morning. Yeah. I was at Bartlett's, and it was a steady, busy stream. Yeah. First time that people were actually like saying hi and yeah. knowing who I was. Yeah. So that felt good because that felt like uh, You've made headway. I've, I've done some work. You did the and, things. Yeah, you know, and, and that, I mean, you know. I gotta go from 42% to 51%. So, you know, people are gonna have to come out and, and I know. support me. Uh, Dan and I are lucky we didn't have a primary election, <laughs> um, which allows me to be very um, lazy today and not go to the polls. Um, and and everyone is missing, you know, Tammy's super fancy no. uh, little mats and her yeah. soup and her I don't, tents I don't, and her... I, it's like camping. I don't do the roughing. Right. I just don't. If I'm, I've got to spend 13 hours at the polls, I'm going to be comfortable. And I ask my the people who volunteer for me, I would expect them to be yes. comfortable. Uh -huh. um, In fact, we were, I was at a, a function and, and the person who was doing the announcements was... Laying it on very thick in terms of, I think, his first pole standing experience ever was in Ward 10 with Tammy. And so, so I, he has this delusional sense of how it works. Yeah. He was like, they're heated pan, <laughs> and you get soup, and there's a tent, and there's like, and it was like, no, not at my six polling no, stations. No, definitely not today. Anyways, barely, it's going to be almost, it's going to be like 87. I was, I, I saw that this morning because at first I thought, Jesus, it looks a little cloudy out. I hope it's not crappy. And then it said, you know, mostly sunny. Um, and I know you're reconnecting. Who knows? Okay. Uh, mostly sunny and uh, 87. So if you're out there at the polls holding a sign for somebody to support, which I'm going to make a shameless plug. So um, besides your race, uh, the only other primary race that I've really had a vested interest in for um, because of people I know. You know, so I have, I obviously want Republicans to win in November, but um, there's usually only a handful of cases in the primaries that really are. And uh, for me, it's in the congressional race. In CD1, if you live in CD1 um, and you're not sure who to vote for, you have the choice between Matt Mowers and Matt Mayberry. I um, strongly urge you to cast your vote for Matt Mayberry. He has done more. Um, I love boots. that you're loyal. Yeah, I mean, he's boots a really, on the ground. Yeah. He is a boots on the ground. Yeah. Do what's got to get done to get the Republican candidates elected. Um, and that's a, not an easy thing to do because sometimes you're pushing for somebody that you maybe aren't 100% aligned with. But when you're dedicated to the cause, just like, you know, what we say with Liberty, when you're dedicated to the cause, you just have to get all in and do it. So if you're in CD1 and you haven't cast your ballot yet, um, Matt Mayberry, if you have any questions, if you're not sure, you can call him directly, 603-969-7077. That's his cell phone number. Wow. He'll answer. He'll convince you that you should vote for him today. And good luck to you, Matt. If you're, good luck to you. You'll be fine. Um, I you'll mean, be fine. I, I, I hope so. If it, It's if, just weird. I hate that feeling. Even well, when you know it's going to be fine, it's the most annoying feeling in the world well i'm actually trying to uh approach this in a in a very like sort of just balanced um uh, laissez-faire <laughs> you know like I, I've, I've done the work that yep. is necessary to this point you know it's it's sort of beyond one's control and i mean i think out of jack and i am by far a better candidate yeah. and i you know i mean i clearly think i'm better than lou too <laughs> and i think maybe folks are ready for a change yeah. so i i'm feeling cautiously um, optimistic and i'll probably have to eat gruel next week <laughs> no 
Um, so this past weekend was Labor Day. It was indeed. Which is, you know, that last weekend of summer, which it was really, really nice. Dan, it was Dan and I kayaked yesterday. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. yeah, we went out on uh, on the trails yeah. and we saw, actually we were down at Ma Namaste. Yeah. And I saw a bunch of people on the pedal boards, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, I want to learn yeah. that next, I think. It's there supposed was, to be a really good we went feel up, core. It is. Um, we went up to Mount William Pond, which is in Ware. Okay. And we had uh, one Where? of my friend Whitey, who lives up on Rockland Avenue, is a supporter, um, told us about it recently when we were talking with him. And um, we checked it out. It was nice little, it was very small, which is nice. Um, you know, do the perimeter, had lunch in the middle of the water, and <laughs> came back home. Um, but, anyways, it's Labor Day. And, you know, people think of it just as a summer holiday weekend. And, you know, the, the, start of labor day came from the labor movement it's not yeah. um it's not a summer holiday to them um and i watched bits of a video by mark mckenzie who wants to run against uh, ted gatz's for executive council which is probably not what we need um since he was the former president of the afl cio i don't know if that's what we need at the executive council level but he talked about oh the labor movement and how wonderful the labor movement is and how they brought us all these things today and we wouldn't have labor day without you know you wouldn't enjoy this weekend if it wasn't for the labor movement which is a bit much um well which, labor day is an international it holiday is. isn't it and it i mean it literally is a uh, communist yes holiday. yes <laughs> so what i was i thought the irony that here, you know, this former AFL-CIO president who would like to um, dictate your life um, in government w was talking about the labor movement and how wonderful they are just days after we learn that the labor movement, the police union, um, is going to basically force the Manchester taxpayers to spend probably at least $150,000 of your money, your money, not, it doesn't come from some secret pool from some insurance money. This is money that could be spent elsewhere. This is money that could go towards books and classrooms or cleaning up the parks or raises for, I don't know, some group that doesn't get raises or whatever. Um, for those of you who want. There are no such groups. I know, but I'm just saying, do you really think this is the best use of 150000 So the story, the backstory, because I don't know if everybody really remembers. The short backstory is um, former police detective Aaron Brown was fired by former chief uh, Nick Willard back in, I believe he was fired in 2019. He was fired in, in 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. So he was fired in like the middle of 2018. And, or maybe like three months into it, three, four months into it. And um, this stemmed from, so the, the this week's story is this went, the union filed a grievance. And the union said, no, 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 you, he shouldn't have been fired. And they went round and round. And the arbiter, which is binding, said, no, he should have only been suspended for 30 days. He should, and they're, the union is forcing the city to rehire this man and pay him his back wages. Now, what did he do? Well, in the, the short story, because it's timely and it's in the news, he made really racist comments. He's a police officer and he made really racist comments and that was In not writing, a, mm, on text, yes. unequivocally, very clearly, there's written evidence, no one disputes that right. it was said. Right. So, so that the, part is like- that's, t that's a story you read in today's paper. But for those of you like me who tend to remember things, I just did a little Google, Aaron Brown, Manchester Police. Back in January of 2019, there was an article in the uh, union leader because you, the taxpayers, already p spent $45,000 of your tax money because of this. Because the woman so, that this cop was forcing to have sex. So so just to back up, so so the same officer, Aaron Brown, it, um, the, the arbitration went it's circling sort of around the racist comments, yeah. but the There's actual a... thing where it started, and I recall when this happened, yeah. obviously I'm a police accountability person, so I pay attention, mm -hmm. and I like to see when, you know, swift action is taken. And I recall when this happened, I was very impressed by exactly, Chief Willard, because he did because exactly. Because I was like, this is what? wrong. That and never you're happens. That's right. you know? And I was like, wow, um, okay, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps you are you know, less just stuck in your ways and protecting your own. So this story I, from this article, just so that I don't miss, you know, misspeak. Um, he was a street level detective 
And uh, there was actually an investigation of a different officer, and then it led to an investigation of him because, you know, you start peeling back those layers of the onion and you find all sorts of things. Um, this woman claimed that in 2009, Aaron Brown, the guy we're going to pay 150000 give or take, um, coerced her and another woman to show him their breasts in order to secure bail and prevent him from notifying their probation officers of potential violations. He is then alleged to have called her frequently, showing up at her house in uniform, buying her drinks, and demanding that she has sex with him. Now, keep in mind, this is a married man with two children who is a cop, who I'm sorry, if you're a cop, you're supposed to be a... There's a caliber of human that person. I think you need to be. And we have this cop who's forcing women to do things and promising them that I won't turn you in if you do these things. And, you know, I won't tell my wife and I won't teach this to my children. Um, and then he went on, then you get into the racist parts. And there was, um, cause Carl, uh, Chief Capano was like outraged that the, this decision was made. Um, he went as far as to joke about shooting blacks in his text messages. He said, Besides, I got this new fancy gun. Take out parking tickets, no problem. FYI, parking tickets equals black fella. Brown texted his wife in 2017 when she was worried about him working on a case in Boston. Two months later, he sent his wife a video of a crack bunny fight and wrote, I am certainly not a racist. I have my pro proclivities. I can never say this right. Thank you. About people. But these folks are straight up ends, no two ways about it. Wow. Serve no place in life or society, yet they're completely taking over all parts of our daily life. I'm sorry, this is not the quality of person that should be a police officer. So let's talk a little bit about like why this is happening and maybe what we can do about it, right? So, so basically the police chief who worked with him, fired him, yep. did not want him on the force. The current police chief, who, by the way, is, uh, is retiring, retiring now. And, at I, the end of this month, yeah. I, I would be curious, and I think this does feed into the oh, rest I'm, of it, I think where so too. Um, all these police chiefs come in and they serve exactly three I years. Know. The reason for that is the union contracts, because you get pension, um, tag to your last three years, highest last three yep. years of salary. So, um, you know, the fact that no one actually stays one extra day and gets yeah. to retire when they're still in their 40s seems, you know, seems pr like a pretty sweet deal. So that that probably goes in that basket with, mm -hmm. with the union issue. And then, so one police chief fired him, the next police chief does not want him. The taxpayers should not want have this guy, and we should not have to pay for this. So why, one, is there binding arbitration? Uh, why are we being forced to do things we, that we don't want to do? Right. Who in this scenario, other than this bad cop, actually wants this? Benefits. The union and the cop. Right. And I don't so know. When we talk about police reform and sort of the challenges that we, I mean, I was so outraged by all of this. I've just been sharing it all over social media with air quotes around the word reform, right? right. So we had such a huge opportunity in the past three months to really go, wow, I think everyone agrees there's a problem. Can we solve this? And then these kinds of things happen and it takes away all my trust in anyone doing the right thing. Well, and so, I mean, is this something we can fix through legislation? Do we have to bust the union? Well, do we? Here's the thing. I, mean, I don't know how you bust the unions because when you talk to people, I mean, think about it. A large number of the people who are actually casting votes for whether they for me and you or whoever are actually in these unions. So it is very, very hard in a city like Manchester. Um, but I, I, I just want reasonable, I want reasonable things. The pensions make me crazy because I agree. We pay people based on their highest three years. And the reason that's a problem is because we have a defined benefit retirement system as opposed to a defined contribution. So for the rest of us, you know, regular people. <laughs> us plebeians. What happens is we pay into our retirement funds. We pay into our 401ks or our IRAs or whatever we do. And yes, in those highest three years of our salaries, we're also probably paying in a larger amount because we can afford to. But when we retire, 
when we say, you know, everybody has the right to retire. No, there's no rule that you have to work till you're 60 or 65. But if I choose to retire prior to a certain age, 64. So in some ways, I'm you in the private sector are forced right. To I'm going to be penalized if I take that money yep. early. So it encourages people to not dip into retirement funds until they're above retirement age. And also encourages private people to to continue to, to work. Stay in the workforce. And, and to provide. stay in yes. the workforce and to provide. But then on the flip side, when we get to, we being the state, gets to write their own rules, right. they're like, oh, you know what? It seems reasonable that we should let people retire when they're 48, which I think is I how think, old I think, uh, I don't, uh, Chief um, Capano is. He's young. I mean, right. he's young looking. And I, I think do he's probably know that the, I do know. And, I, and I, then I, they go double dip. So now he's going to get he, this salary like Chief Willer did, Chief Willard resigned and then went and worked for what was it? I Fusion think for ICE Sensen or something, or yeah. Homeland Security so or the you know, problem some is, other is that you know, I'm, you know what? I don't really blame um, Chief Capano for wanting to leave at this point juncture because, I mean, admittedly, being a chief of police is probably a miserable <laughs> I mean, job right I now. I wouldn't want to be it right now with, right, this, with this Aaron guy. Brown well, I mean, story and with all the in. protests and people being, I mean, you know, like, I'm okay with protesting bad actions by police, but I mean, we all see the videos. There's videos of cops who are writing, you know, a parking ticket and get th brick thrown at their head. N not, not okay. Um, so if he wanted to say, I'm done, that's fine, but you shouldn't be able to get your retirement money. You know, like, because that's, uh, because it's defined benefit, we have to pay it, whether, like, it, it never runs out. That's, you know, it, it, it astounded me. I was down in South Carolina a couple of years ago visiting my parents, and I met this gentleman, the sweetest old guy, but he drove mm -hmm. a really fancy mm -hmm. sports Corvette, and I was like, oh, that's, that's a nice, nice car. And we got to chatting, and he mentioned, I mean, he, he had been a firefighter in yep. New York City. Mm -hmm. He worked for 20 years, and he's been on retirement for 48 yeah. years. <laughs> and even if it's only a, I mean, like, I And think I'm like, that is not sustainable. Sustainable. No, the ma you, it's yeah. math. This is math, folks. It's like money, you in, know, money out. Old time okay. pensions. If you go back to you know the '60s or the '70s, pensions were you know you retired at 65, and you know you died at 73. Well, you see, <laughs> and this, that was it. See, that's another interesting thing. You know, I was trying to think with all this virus stuff and sort of the the outcomes and what are we going to see from this. I think one of the things that saddens me the most is that we've. Uh, it's somehow become acceptable to just kind of leave, you know, your your family members, the elderly, in in the home, and yeah. we've sort of broken that relationship where you can go and be with your loved ones, especially in hospice when they're passing and those kinds of things. And I find it upsetting because I was like, I, I hope, I hope it's not sort of uh, intentional in the sense that as we move to more socialized medicine. One of the things people don't want to recognize and don't want to understand, but it is true, is that socialized medicine means people have to make hard choices. Yes. And a lot of times they will actually choose to not pro prolong your life, right? Because right? it's not an, a good investment. Right. And so, you know, I'm concerned that by taking family members out of the mix it's in these medicine. areas, it might actually create an incentive for people to kind of, you know, just to help people along a little faster. Faster. Yeah. And, and I know that that happened in New York State during this thing. I mean, that they can actually, there is a study yeah. that can show, you know, it wasn't just the COVID. It was, it was know, the this, way they reacted. Yeah. I, saw, I saw a thing on Facebook. It was a picture of a plane with, you know, one of those banners. And it says, Cuomo killed Nana. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, I thought, and they were flying it over a beach. And I was like, eee. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's he, not untrue. I mean, if you want to look at propaganda, you have to ask yourself, why is everyone saying New York did it right? No. And I'm like, New York did killed it. Killed off all sorts of people wrong. poorly. Yeah. Really, really poorly. So what can we do about this what um, do you think like should people demand that you know well, should you do a petition I do a letter writing campaign what else could he do if the, if if they're saying well the, uh, i don't know binding. sexually coercing someone being a racist is not enough to get you fired then like what is a right. fireable I do offense think, i do think this comes down to because it's like what can i do i don't really know that i can do anything and talk about it but the problem is is that there are and I'm not saying it's all cops because it's not. Um, 
There are police who act poorly. There are people who are in positions of power, because that's what police are, they have a position of power, who shouldn't. Who maybe don't, some people don't have the appropriate training, some people haven't had their backgrounds looked into, there's not enough internal accountability, um, there definitely is not enough transparency. We see this all the time. We don't even know who's on this Lori's list that says, oh, you know. Oh, but you know, we put together the task force that had almost only law enforcement on it. And the task force came back with close to zero reforms. We're in worse position than we were before it started. So, so you I'm have to, I mean, the, the pressure down. really almost has to be from the public on the actual police, I think. But here's my question, though. Because of the union contracts, are, I mean, can they just fire him for no calls? No. No, right? No. So, so and coercing someone for sex yes. and being a racist, not grounds so, for, for, so what is grounds uh, for, for, I murder, for I don't know. Legitimate Any, dismissal. I have no idea. I, and like, I look at this and somebody could say, oh, well, and we have to pay back pay, by the oh, way, yeah, no, too. No. So forget so I, about the 150000 No, that's, that's probably, the back pay. That, but so, that probably, with the lawyer's fees and the insurance that's going to um, go up and everything, is probably I, easily I do know. I went 000. back and looked just to get an idea. So in 2018, which is the year we fired him, we paid him $33,000. Now, I looked... the the most recent year that I could see what his salary was, was in 2016, he was making $70,000 a year. So by 2018, let's say he was making $75,000 a year. And that excludes your benefits, that's which just are your worth salary. 30, 40, 50, um, Just saying. It, so that means we're easily, oh, and that we're gonna be forced to pay him 40 grand for 2018, easily, right? Then you figure another 70, 75 for 2019. This is assuming that He's only at seventy five thousand. If he became a um, different, he was a police officer and became a detective. There could be a salary bump there. And then this year, even if it's only half a year, we we are in for at least another forty. So you're at one hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars easily. But are, and he has to get his job back. And we've already paid this poor this woman who was coerced forty five thousand dollars. And I don't know what's involved in legal fees and all and our and the cost to the city to have to arbitrate this. And uh, like, okay, it's bad news. Let me ask you guys this. Like if you if we assume that the structure is that these people work for us, right? Right, so, which so, is so the, the government it. is supposed to serve our needs, and uh, they they are they're supposed to serve us. Then how, under any kind of system, are we as the taxpayers beholden to this situation where no one wants this guy on the force except this guy clearly and, and the, the union. union, and yet? We have no power to do anything about that. I find that troubling because that to me means that we are not in charge of this relationship yeah. at all. So the police are not beholden to the taxpayer. And that seems to be a problem. Well, you have to, you have to the things you can do as a viewer, you can, uh, you can elect people who are going to hold people accountable, who are going to um, look at union contracts and say, <laughs> Like at the city level, you know, look at the aldermen. It matters when they look at a union contract and say, wait a minute, how about we don't put this little clause in there? And you need people at the state level who can pass legislation that maybe pro pulls back what um, what is acceptable because they're... And, and the problem thing, is, is that this all comes down to federal law. The PELRB, which I always laugh, laugh to say, which is like the Public Employee Labor Relations Board, the PELRB, whatever, you know, they they're dictated by federal law so good luck ever fixing it but i do think we can do things at the state level um to try to hold people more accountable and like somebody said to me well what about this woman maybe she was not you know maybe she's not the most credible and i thought okay back up and don't look at all the deep let's just look at superficial stuff he made texts with his wife that clearly were inappropriate i don't care if they're within your wife they were not made to be jokes. Even if they were jokes, these are the things that you find funny. Then he supposedly was doing things, um, making deals with uh, people on probation to keep them out of trouble. And then at the one that's the like the icing on the cake is, so he lost his job in 2018. He sits home waiting for the union to fix it for him. 
does not look for another job. He stays home for a year and a half, two years, waiting for the union to get, to get him his back pay. What kind of person is that? Like, who does that? That's not the kind of people we need in government serving us the people. I'm sorry, it just isn't. So anyways, that's the that's the my Labor Day ir irony story. Um, <laughs> back to primary day since we're doing this live. Please make sure you get out there and vote. If you're an undeclared voter, you can choose a Democrat ballot or a Republican ballot. I would encourage you to take them if you live in Carla's district, wards three, four, 10. 10, 11, or Goffstown, or if you live in CD1, please take a Republican ballot. Vote for Carla for New Hampshire Senate, and please vote for Matt Mayberry for Congress. Um, we'll see how it goes. And then tomorrow we start the new race, because tomorrow's day one tomorrow of the November election. Tomorrow is a election. fresh start. In uh, the meantime, I crack out a new <laughs> Carla for Senate t -shirt. In the meantime, uh, <laughs> COVID numbers are, do, are on the downswing. Um, Rarely have we had new deaths in New Hampshire, and when we have, sadly, those are people in um, long-term care facilities, and they generally are like 80 or older. Not that we want to see anybody die, but it's not like it's running rampant through the community. Um, Manchester has between 20 and 30 people on any given day um, out of 112,000 that actually have COVID. So don't let this consume your life. You have to get on with living because yep. life's too short. Live free and thrive. That's right. So that's all we got. Make sure you get out there and vote. And we will be back next week. And who knows what we'll talk about. We'll see. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. Thanks, guys.